Okay, hello. Um, first of all, sorry for the lack of updates. Uh, I've been quite busy for the last few weeks. But lucky for you, all the time that I've had, I've basically dedicated to coding the new cache system for particles. So, uh, the first new thing is that there are no longer uh, the start and end frames that are calculated automatically based on the start and end frames and lifetime value and the animation length of the current scene. Uh, the second new thing is that there are now four different cache modes which uh, change the um, uh, how the cache works. Uh, and the first one is quite similar to the old uh, continued physics option. Uh, and as you can see, we can just play back and start changing things. And it uses the things automatically. You can basically do whatever ever we want without having to worry about any caches. Um, and we can also scrub on the timeline. All the negative frame steps are uh, do reset the cache as we can go backwards in time, but then again when we scrub forwards uh, the particles start get calculated again. And this is a nice way of uh, seeing what, quickly seeing what uh, different changes do and getting to getting the feel you want for the particles. Some gravity too. Okay. Uh, one thing though is that uh, if we set something that changes every frame, like the Brownian force, then especially on bigger frame changes, the particles can't be calculated exactly anymore. Uh, but for that we have the Calculate Current Frame button which goes through the whole animation and gets us the exact result if we want to see that. Okay, then the free cache mode which is quite similar to the non-cache mode uh, in the sense that uh, we can also do whatever we want uh, but now as the cache is used we can also go backwards and the particles aren't reset. And we can change stuff and the particles react accordingly. Uh, one nice thing with this is that uh, if we take a biggest frame step initially, uh, and now we have only two uh, cache frames. We have the first frame and frame number 120. Now any changes we make uh, will be calculated automatically so we can see what different parameters do in real time. But of course like with the uh, non-cache mode uh, is not totally accurate. For all accuracy we have to, have to calculate all, all of the frames. And we have the cache to current frame for that purpose here also. But now, of course, all the changes are cached. Um, one other thing which is new before we go to the exact and auto cache modes is that uh, currently all the caching is done by default to memory. But of course the cache files can take quite a lot of space, so we can set to use the disk cache. And then the cache gets uh, converted into the bfis files from the in the blender cache directory. Uh, and as you can now see, we've, uh, we clicked to a larger frame step and there are only a few cache files, only for the frame 1 and frame 101. And if we scrub through some more, 
we'll see that some more cache files get generated automatically. Um, another thing with the disk cache is that we can name the cache. Let's say, for example, this cache. And now we see that the uh, files get also named after the cache. Of course, you can cache uh, the memory. Uh, you can give a name to the memory cache also, but uh, currently it doesn't yet give so much meaning because we can only have uh, one cache in a dynamic system. Uh, I plan on making it possible to have multiple caches in one dynamic system and perhaps even blending between those, but uh, that will be for the future. Okay, if you uh, then clear the cache name, then the no default number or the object name that's coded into numbers will get used instead. Okay, but let's change to the memory cache again, and we see that the cache files get uh, removed and converted back into memory cache, and also we see that the cache is uh, remaining or it's kept all the time. It hasn't vanished anywhere. Uh, one other thing is the uh, current cache to bake button, which if we like what we see here, and we can even change some stuff in the middle, we can just set this to be the current bake. And then any changes we make, they won't be uh, erased anymore. Okay, then on to the exact cache mode. This is uh, nearly like the old horrible cache way that uh, we can't scrub the uh, timeline forwards or backwards. And we have to go to the very first frame and start animating. But the positive side in this that is that uh, now everything is exact like the cache mode name says. And uh, in addition, uh, we also have the cache to current frame, so that we don't have to go to the first frame and start the playback like in the previous uh, cache. Here, the last thing is the auto cache mode, which uh, does this whole thing. It's most like the exact cache mode, but it does the cache to current frame automatically on every frame change. So if we, for example, uh, not on every frame change, but on every parameter change, as you can see, it's quite slow currently, but uh, I've been thinking of ways to make it a little bit faster. One is would be to have the caching in viewport calculate only the display percentage of particles and then at render time or when baking the system could calculate all of the particles get the exact result but okay I think that's about it this is the current state of caching uh, I hope you like it uh, but please give me some comments on how to improve things and make it even better. Thank you for watching the video. See you next time.